Hello everyone. In recent videos, I've often shown my main work soldering iron, the TS-100. People often ask what I've done with it and how it handles soldering large components, and what exactly is clamped onto the soldering iron. In general, guys, there were a lot of questions. Some accused me of simply ruining the soldering iron, while others didn't believe that the small TS-100 could handle such massive tasks. And the flood of questions prompted the creation of this video. By the way, this is not an advertisement, but a genuine review from someone for whom the soldering iron is almost a way of life. Links to the soldering iron itself and the JAL kit can be found in the description. And I'll add that this is not a review of the soldering iron. I will make that very soon on my second channel. You can also find the link to the channel in the description. The TS-100 is currently the most compact and advanced soldering iron. It costs quite a bit, but it's really cool. I always take it with me when I leave home for a few days. I power it with the cheapest universal adapter with an 80W capacity. Although I also have better power adapters, converters, and batteries for various situations. At the very beginning, I'll say that I've had this particular soldering iron for over a year. It has the original tip, that came with the set. I solder very actively for 3 to 4 hours a day regularly, without weekends or holidays. I think I might be the first person to completely wear out the non-burnable tip of the TS-100. By the way, just the tip costs. 10 to 12 dollars. I also have another TS-100 soldering iron, but with a sharp tip, which I don't really like for soldering. And since waiting for new tips from China takes at least a month, if not two, I decided to slightly refurbish a completely worn out old tip. This brought several huge advantages. First, the contact area of the tip increased. Second, the non-burnable coating is good, but the thermal conductivity of copper is better. In short, such a tip heats up faster and more intensely. Thanks to this, you can solder anything you want. And, finally, third. In such tips, the thermal sensor is located very close to the tip. And, by grinding the tip to such an extent, it turns out that I got even closer to the thermal sensor. Thanks to this, the soldering iron's electronics instantly react to the slightest temperature fluctuations at the tip and immediately increase the power. The downside is the lifespan of such a tip. The copper burns out fairly quickly, and you have to grind the tip every week. Soon it will be done for. I hope that by then a new tip will arrive from China. But soldering with such a modified tip was a real pleasure. And now, let me show you what the soldering iron is capable of. Afterwards, we'll take it apart, and I'll show you what's inside. To avoid additional questions, I'll note that you won't achieve these results with the original tips. And by the way, during the tests, I didn't use any fluxes. Neither active nor passive. The flux in the form of rosin is in the solder itself. The solder is good, but expensive. For the last two years, I've only been using this kind. And I recommend it to you. Let's go.
I think there's no need to comment. Let me remind you that the soldering iron itself is only 65 watts. And a few words about the solder itself. I buy this from local suppliers. It's good because it melts easily, the flux content is adequate, it hardly smokes when melting, and it provides a very reliable connection. It also doesn't crack, and the printed tracks coated with this solder will shine beautifully forever. I'll try to find the same solder on AliExpress, and if I do, you'll find the link in the description. And again, this is not an advertisement, the solder is really great, and I recommend it to everyone. And now it's time to take apart the soldering iron. Inside, it's quite complex. It's an entire station in the compact handle of the soldering iron. A powerful 32-bit STM32 processor controls all of this. With an accelerometer board nearby. On the main, or power board, you can see quite powerful field assemblies that directly control the heating element. There are many tips for this soldering iron. They are all made using the same technology. Completely monolithic with a non-stick coating, and most importantly, quick release. The downside is the price. A full set of seven tips will cost you over $70. The TS-100 is equipped with a small OLED display that shows all the necessary information. Two control buttons allow you to quickly set the desired temperature in 10 degree increments. The soldering iron can be programmed via a smartphone or computer. There aren't many settings. You can change the idle time, after which the soldering iron will start to lower the temperature, the time to enter sleep mode, the tip heating temperature after turning on, and so on. When you're not using the soldering iron, it lowers the tip temperature to 200 degrees by default. After some time, it turns off completely. This is very convenient when you have a small child at home. It's almost impossible to get burned by such a soldering iron. As soon as you pick up the soldering iron, the accelerometer will activate and automatically start heating the tip to the temperature you previously set. The biggest feature is the smart heating system. As I mentioned earlier, the thermocouple in these tips is as close to the tip as possible. The PWM control system will automatically increase the power. It will always try to maintain the set temperature at the tip of the soldering iron and it does this very quickly. This feature eliminates issues such as an underheated or unheated soldering iron, lack of power, and solder cooling due to low heat capacity of the tip, along with other problems familiar to every electronics hobbyist. This soldering iron is sufficient for absolutely any electronics hobbyist tasks. Even a 100 watt soldering iron would envy this little guy. Additionally, the T100 heats up from 0 to 300 degrees in just 10 to 12 seconds. This is faster than any other soldering iron, at least several times over. The power supply voltage range for the soldering iron is from 12 to 24 volts. Naturally, the lower the supply voltage, the lower the power and the longer the tip heating time. The original tips for this soldering iron have a non-stick coating. They will last at least a year if you solder as actively as I do. Otherwise, they can last a couple of years without any issues. I think it's time to wrap up, guys. You can find all the necessary links in the description. And with that, it's time for me to say goodbye. And as always, it was Kazuya Naka with you. See you next time. Bye.